Hello friends, welcome to my channel Data Making. In this video, I am going to discuss about one of the best way to run your PySpark code using a Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so we'll see how to configure the uh, Jupyter Notebook to run your PySpark code. Okay, so uh, so let me explain you. So basically, uh, what you need to have is uh, you should have uh, uh, installed uh, Apache Spark. Actually, I am using a, a Spark version 2.4.4. Okay, so uh, if you want to install uh, uh, Apache Spark, I have a separate video for that. You can just take it from my uh, playlist. Uh, uh, you can just follow the how to install uh, Spark on your uh, Ubuntu uh, virtual machine. Okay, so then uh, you should have a Python install in your machine. Okay, so I am going to install the uh, uh, Anaconda distribution Python, which comes with the uh, Jupyter notebook. So basically, Jupyter Notebook is a web-based tool to run your Python program. So what we are going to make use of the Jupyter Notebook to uh, Jupyter Notebook to run your uh, PySpark code. So you you can actually uh, launch uh, Jupyter Notebook, okay, by uh, typing a PySpark command in the shell, which will open the uh, Jupyter Notebook, and you can write a PySpark code. When you run, it will go and run on the Spark environment. So that's how we are going to do it. So basically, what you can do is uh, you can so if you do this similar this way, you basically can write a PySpark code and you can practice. And if with the result of PySpark code, you can actually build a visualization uh, in the uh, notebook itself. Okay, that's a, one of the good advantage you you can get it. Okay, I will tell you how to do this. So first, I'm going to I assume that you have a, a Spark installed in your Ubuntu machine. Uh, I am going to start with the uh, Python Anaconda version Python installation, then configuring a, um, a Jupyter notebook uh, uh, when when the PySpark. Uh, uh, so when you new PySpark command, it will open a Jupyter notebook and you can write a code in that. So let's start with that. Okay. So what I am going to do is. Uh, uh, okay. So so what the uh, first we need to start a Python version, uh, the Anaconda distribution of Python. Okay, so uh, for installing Anaconda distribution of Python, you can actually go to the, go to the Google and you can uh, just uh, Google the Anaconda Python distribution. It will open this home pages like this, and you can click on the download button. Okay, once you click on the download button, it will open uh, uh, basically the download page. Okay, you can scroll down. In the bottom, you can see uh, two. Uh, uh, High level version of Python, three, uh, Python 3.7 and 2.7. So uh, to run uh, uh, Python uh, uh, like Spark with Python version, it supports both uh, 2.x version as well as 3.6 plus later version also. Uh, but I am familiar with the Python uh, 2.7, so I'll just start with the Python 2.7. If you can try with the Python 3.7 as well. So you can just click on this uh, uh, three tab will be there uh, to download your installer. So basically, you can just click on uh, Linux because I'm going to install it on Ubuntu. Okay. So if you want to do it on Windows, you can just go on do it on Windows as well. Okay. So because I installed my Spark and uh, Hadoop uh, 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 framework on my Ubuntu version, I'm going to use the Ubuntu version. So once you click on it, uh, once you click on the download button of 2.7 version. Okay, so you will actually uh, get the uh, 16 point. So basically, you can just uh, click this installer 16 uh, bit uh, uh, version. Okay, so once you click it, you will get the uh, this uh, installer file. Okay, the shell script. Okay, so you can save it. Okay, it's around uh, 476 uh, MB. Okay, so basically, it will take some time based on your internet bandwidth. So you just uh, check for that. So once you download this, okay, basically you will uh, find a, a file called uh, Anaconda 2, okay, Anaconda 2 iPhone 2019 and uh, 0.07 uh, iPhone Linux iPhone x86 iPhone 64 sh This is the installer file. So basically to check the data integrity of the installer file, you can just run the SHA256 sum, sum, okay, so it will generate this. Uh, uh, the cryptographic key okay now you can use this uh, shell script to uh, uh, install file to run the installation just say uh, bash okay 
bash space and you give the the sh file name so it will just prompt you uh, whether to continue the installation just say enter okay so it will just uh, uh, list down the uh, and I'm going to end user license agreement. You just read, go, go through it. Okay, and say uh, just next. Thanks. Just type enter. So it then it will accept. It will actually prompt you saying that do you want to uh, do you accept the license terms? Say type yes. Once you type yes, it is going to suggest you the installation path. By default, it will actually suggest you to uh, install on the home home directory of the particular user you are logged in in the Ubuntu version. Okay, so I'll just continue with the my user uh, uh, home folder, which is my username is uh, DM admin. So I'm going to uh, allow this uh, installer to install uh, Anaconda Python on my uh, home directory itself. Okay, so once this is uh, you just do enter or you can suggest wherever path you want to install it. You can provide the path also as well. So then once you did it is going to install the python as well as the uh, a lot of uh, uh, pre uh, pre built packages so actually you will install some uh, packages uh, by default so that you don't need to install the packages when you want to use it uh, like if you, if you don't uh, if you install a classic python version many packages uh, would not be installed so you have to go and install manually but when you install the anaconda python so you, it has uh, some preset of packages it will install automatically so that you can just go and use it so it will start uh, uh, installing those packages and it wait for some time then it will ask you to uh, initialize the um, anaconda 2 in a bash rc file yes yes say yes okay so just it will go and uh, put the uh, environment variable in the uh, it will add to the environment the the anaconda version of uh, installation path it will go and add it in the environment variable okay once this is done it is done okay you can just type uh, uh, python so you can see the prompt okay the python prompt has come it says python 2.7.16 uh, and anaconda enc so so anaconda is installed okay so when you install anaconda uh, distribution of python zupyter comes with by default okay now what you are going to do is we are going to do only two lines of uh, a code uh, put it in the uh, two lines of code or configuration to put in the bash rc file dot bash rc file so that <clears throat> the PySpark when you invoke a PySpark command it will just uh, open up um, uh, a spark environment with the uh, Jupyter notebook so that you can write a code okay I'll tell you how to do this okay now this uh, till this it is done now we will go to the VM Okay, this is my uh, VM. Okay, before going to this, I will just minimize recording window. Okay, I have uh, many uh, videos on different uh, technologies like uh, Apache Spark, uh, Apache Hadoop, and uh, some of the machine learning uh, 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 algorithms implementation. And I have a data uh, engineering uh, uh, preparation, data engineer preparation program. Uh, many, many videos I have it. You just please uh, go and watch and uh, provide your feedback and uh, if you have any doubt and post your uh, comments now we are in the uh, logging into the my vm it is logging in saying time time okay, it is already logged in so you can just open the bash rc file Okay, so now the it is open the bash rc file okay so what you are going to do is uh, basically uh, uh, you are going to set this to, to configuration uh, properties basically you have to add the two environment variable that's it what is the environment variable is pyspark underscore uh, driver underscore python equal to jupyter and the Py, uh, pyspark underscore driver underscore python underscore option opts equal to notebook you just have to set this to uh, environment variable in your bash rc file uh, then you just save it and refresh the bash rc file then you are ready to run the the pyspark command which will open the uh, jupyter notebook 
we'll see how it works okay so once you uh, make this to change just save it i am using a nano editor control uh, uh, o to uh, write okay and uh, exit okay just refresh you can run the source command yes so okay now it is refreshed now i'll just uh, type uh, pyspark it is going to launch the uh, azure bidder notebook okay then you can write a pyspark code in that so it is it is launching the uh, pyspark uh, jupyter notebook okay it's a web based uh, notebook so uh, you can just go and uh, click on new button here and then just uh, get python here so it will open a new uh, notebook for you okay uh, <coughs> little bit slow my machine just apology for that Okay, just you can type uh, uh, so it will there will be when you open a python uh, command line uh, means uh, command line interface cli uh, generally you uh, you get the spark session object by default right so similarly the same thing uh, it just uh, you are using the pyspark uh, interface okay to access uh, spark environment and run the code pyspark code so it is trying to connect to the uh, kernel So it is going to return the the information about the spark session object it is taking a little bit time okay it says could not connect and establish no book we connect check your network i will reconnect again okay so i just stop the kernel i think it is connected or restart and clear output oh it's, it's already run actually okay anyway i just given a restart okay so uh, so this is it's showing the uh, the information about spark session object so what is the master url so in the my spark installation i given the master url is uh, spark uh, colon slash slash localhost uh, colon 7000 that's what it is showing here and the application name is pyspark shell because we invoke the pyspark which actually internally uh, means it, it's called which which called the uh, the jupyter notebook right now we can go and write the uh, uh, code here so basically i already uh, created one more, one more notebook okay so this is uh, pyspark with the uh, uh, jupyter uh, demo so i'll open this notebook it is going to it is going to open your uh, uh, notebook it is taking a little bit time it's a simple python uh, pyspar program i written so basically i created a, a, a list with the tuple okay the python object okay uh, list uh, a list with the tuple okay the uh, three tuple one is uh, saying arjun which he, uh, the score the mark is secured in the mathematics so example arun secured 95 and arjun secured 75 and uh, ajay got uh, 80 80 marks in the mathematics okay so you can think that as sample data so i prepared this uh, list of sample tuples uh, this is the python object you can just print it here okay and then uh, i'll read on this cell so if you this all uh, this particular just say okay
okay so uh, so basically uh, i'm just running okay so meanwhile i'll just explain you the code okay so uh, this is the uh, the spark session object it is created and i have a, a pyspark uh, sorry this um, <coughs> list of tuples which is a python object and i'm actually if we can create a, we am going to create a rdd of key value pair so you just pass this uh, uh, key value pair uh, list to the the tuple list to the parallelized object which will return the rdd okay so let me run this displays is going to create the rdd so i'm going to use the collect uh, action uh, rdd action to uh, collect the data from the or fetch the data from the rdd and it will display here i took this simple example basically i just want to uh, show you how you can actually uh, run your PySpark code using Jupyter Notebook, just changing, uh, providing the two lines of uh, configuration in the bash rc file. Okay. Uh, just taking some time. Okay, so basically it is going to uh, return this uh, uh, list of tuples. Uh, nothing much uh, because this I kept this is a simple program um, I hope this uh, video is helpful for you uh, feel, feel free to uh, put your uh, comments uh, on your uh, uh, or queries on my comment section of video and please subscribe to my channel to get more technology videos thank you so much friends see you in the next video uh, let me check whether it is executed still it is running Is it completed? Oh, it is. Probably already one more uh, session is opened here. Okay, I'll just try to close this. I'll try to close this. Shut down. See still you can just see here uh, because it's saying uh, there is no sufficient uh, resource available because uh, I just open multiple uh, PyCharm as well as because it says little insufficient uh, resource so basically uh, it's running let's check okay I think it ran let's go and check here wow yeah it did <laughs> at last it ran okay so uh, this is how uh, uh, it's it just written the whatever the uh, list of uh, tuples we created okay so this is how you can actually execute your PySpark code uh, in the spark environment uh, thank you so much friends see you in the next video uh, please watch my other videos and playlist in my channel thank you so much